How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our fighting game. In this lecture, we're gonna be setting up and continuing our setup for our game layout. So what we already have done, I've already given you a little bit of a taste of our player and our floor and our collision, but what we need to do is actually add our background to make this look like an actual level. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna click on layer zero and we're gonna change the transparency of this to be yes, because right now we had a background color and by it not being transparent, that background color was visible. If we go to one of these layers here, and this is a common mistake, you might accidentally set the transparency to no, and there you can't. then you can't see anything underneath that layer. So make sure that you have all of these set to yes, since we're not gonna be using any background colors, which is something that I use for lots of tests, we are going to set the, the last layer's transparency to yes as well. Now here's what we're going to do. We're gonna double click and we're gonna add a new sprite. And I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna take it from our sky. It's in our levels. So in our fighting game assets, in our levels, I'm using our sky image here. I'm gonna exit out of this and I'm gonna put it to the top left here. Now actually what I wanna do is I wanna show the grid, which I already am in the view tab here, but I wanna to snap to grid. And I wanna make the grid height kind of close to match our player. So I'm gonna put it to 64. So our width is gonna be 32, and if you can see the grid change there, our height is 64. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, with the snap to grid on, I'm gonna take the sky object here, and I'm gonna drag it across our sky. Something like this should work just fine. I'm gonna call this our object sky, and I'm gonna add this to our level. Cool. So now we're done with our sky, and what we can do is we can right click and rename this to be our background layer. And we're gonna add another background object that probably won't be seen as much, but just so we know it's there, and that way we don't have any blank space on our layout whatsoever. I'm gonna double click and add a new sprite, and this sprite is going to be our tiled background, which now upon reading it, I'm going to make this a tiled background and not a sprite. Now let's delete that and do that again because that's what it's supposed to be. And the reason why it's not a sprite is because if we stretch that, it won't actually go, uh, it, won't, it won't tile horizontally, which is the obvious answer, but it'll also scale too much and it will just look terrible. So we don't need to have that there. And actually we don't even need this to really tile the way we're, we would wanna tile something. So what we're going to do is just stretch this out and you can see that it doesn't really look like a nice tiling effect here, but it's going to work because our camera object is never gonna go that low. And also when I actually, let me move our collision object here, and actually I have to move this up and then drag it down a little bit. You can see that it's going to kind of match our ground. So it might see, you might see a little bit of this here, but you're not gonna see much and you're definitely not gonna see the seams here where the tiling would take place. Okay, so now that we have that, let me put our collision object back. And let me lock our collision. Oops, there we go. Let me lock our collision layer. And now we're pretty much set up. Now we have our background, our floor and our collision, and our entities layer, which has our player and will have our enemy and other things. Let's make our final layer for the free edition of Construct 2, and let's rename this and call it our HUD. We're not gonna do anything with this right now, but the fact that we have our HUD there is good because these are the layers that I want you to have if you're using the free edition. If you're not using the free edition, then we're going to make three more layers and maybe one other one for just some added effects, and in this case, we're gonna add a parallax effect with it. Now you can do a parallax effect with the free version of Construct 2, but that would require us to not have these layers and it would just get really annoying with the whole order process. But if you do have the free edition, put everything on the background layer, what I'm about to just show you now. So here's what we're going to do. We need to have our mountains in between our floor and our background. So they need to be below the floor, but above the background. So to do this, I'm just gonna hit add. I'm gonna move this down. I'm gonna hit add again and move this down and one more time and move this down. So now we actually have our layer structure set up the way we want it to. So let's actually rename this so we know what's going on. I'm gonna re rename layer zero to be three, the number three, because that's going to be the farthest mountain away. I'm gonna really re uh, rename layer one here to two because that's going to be our mid ground. I'm gonna rename layer one or layer two to be one. So that's going to be our foreground here. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually double click and let's actually lock one and two. Let's go to layer three, double click and add a new sprite. 
and this sprite is going to be our mountain three because it's layer three. And let's exit out. And now the reason why we didn't need to do this, and this is pretty much optional. You could have a tiled background if you wanted it to scale, if you were kind of moving around off the layout maybe. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can scale this up enough. So I'm just going to kind of scale this up a little bit more. So I kind of have these mountains to be the size that I wanted them to be. And then I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to go to layer two. I'm going to double click and add a new sprite here. And we're going to name these in a second. And I'm going to go for mountains too. And I'm going to put these right where I want them. And then I'm going to scale them up a whole lot. Well, I'm going to scale them up enough that I think they would look good somewhere like there. And what I might need to do is, I'm probably gonna to have to do this in a second here, is I'm gonna to have to reposition these without the snap to grid on, but for right now it's fine. I'm gonna to go to layer one, double click and add a new sprite. And in this layer, I'm gonna add mountains one. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Let me move this one over and let me scale this up a little bit, maybe this way. Maybe just a little bit bigger. I included a reference image for you. So in that reference image, you can actually figure out. And if this is happening, by the way, we can just set the origin point to be the top left. I was having some issues with that. But the reference image should give you a better idea on the scale here and what scale you want to see. And actually, I'm going to go and do that for every single one here. But first, let me name this to be Object Mountain 1. And then let's go to layer two and let's double click and set the origin to be the top left. And the reason why I put it to the top left for tiles like this is because that's where we want it to bind to for the actual uh, grid corner. And let's put this one over a little bit. So we might want to kind of scale this back. There we go. And let's call this object mountain two. And let's lock it and go to layer one and this one, where's layer one? This one is mountain one. I already did layer one. I meant layer three. Let's go to layer three. Let's move it down a little bit and let's scale it up. Something like this should do perfectly. And let's make sure that we can see that layer. There we go. We want to make sure that we can see this mountain here. I think that's the way that we needed to set it up for our alignment and I can see that one is already off a whole lot there. There we go. That's going to throw everything else off. So let me move everything else up and yet have to make sure that you're locking these. Oh no, these are fine. You have to make sure that you're locking these though because otherwise you're going to kind of click on the one that's the top most. You're going to click on one all the time and don't want to do that. This actually looks pretty much like our reference image here. So I'm pretty happy with that. We don't need to make it any bigger than it has to be. Uh, did it, I make, let me double check this origin point. That's what I was getting thrown off with. So yeah, it's a little bit boring this part, but at least now we have a clearer idea. And let me double check the other origin point on how we're going to be doing this. At least you should start to see a clearer idea here. I'm pretty sure this is to the top left. I'm gonna make it to the top left again anyway. And there we go, I'm fine with this. This, If I need to come back and tweak this, I can. So now, if I hit play, and before I do, I wanna point out that I changed my, uh, my preview settings here. I put it to NWJS, which you can actually check out in the overview section. It's not much, but this way I can actually test it out on the desktop version, and that's only for the personal edition or greater of Construct 2. So now I won't have to keep going back and forth within uh, my Google Chrome here. But okay, so now we kind of have our player and we have we don't have a camera object yet, so the parallaxing is going to be a little bit funny. But we do have our mountains set up and ready to go here. And I actually think I'm gonna take mountain three and I might scale them back a little bit here. They might be a little too tall. Nah, eh, they're fine for now. And if they are too tall, we can just turn the snap to grid off and I can make them a little bit smaller. That way they're not snapping to the grid points. Okay. Enough rambling here. Let's actually do our parallax rate now. So let's go to frame one and let's make sure that this parallax rate is 100 by 100 because this should be our foreground and we want it to stay the same. Now, what we're going to go next is to go to layer two 
and we're only going to affect the x parallax because we we have no reason to affect the y parallax and that's actually just going to mess up your effect altogether and this is in percent so we only want this to be 75 percent so it's not even half speed we're going to go down to the one that's furthest away and we're going to put that x that parallax x to half speed and that way it's going to look like a very nice parallax effect versus something else so let's see here let's see if we can see it at all we might not be able to see anything because we don't have any scroll to whatsoever. So to fix this for right this second without a camera object, just so I can show it to you, is we're gonna go to our entities and we are going to add a scroll to behavior and then we're gonna delete it. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to because we're gonna do something different. But now you can actually see the mountains parallax. There we go. And because we don't have a camera object, you're going to see more of this that I told you you're not going to see. So don't worry about that if you are doing this right now. But you can see the effect that we are going to achieve. And it's actually a pretty good effect. I actually really, really like this effect a whole lot. So there we go. Now we have our parallax effect. And here's what we're going to do now. We're going to delete the scroll to behavior because we do not want it on our player whatsoever. And we can actually move our player down. So let's snap that to the grid. And... Finally, let's actually take our player and let's turn off our default controls because we are getting ready to do our keyboard event next here. So, well, maybe not next, but we're getting ready to do that in for our first coding example here for our game. So now we have our game layout nice and set up. I'm extremely excited and I just realized that I need to put these into our level here. And let me give this one a name. Which one is this? Let's see, which one are you? You are sprites. It's all locked, so I can't tell. Sprites, double click. You are, which one are you? Mountain one, oh man. That took me forever to figure out which one you are. Why this is called sprite, I don't know. I don't know why that's called sprite. This one is called sprite, there we go. That was confusing object so you can see how confusing these can get even with uh, them on separate layers let's call this object mountain uh, three there we go and let's put this into our level and let's call this tiled background or you can call it object but tiled background uh, it's not really that important we can just call this our tiled background for our floor and I can put these back by snapping these back to the grid where they belong somewhere around there something like this. Feel free to mess around with this and see what kind of effects you can achieve. That should be pretty good. Thank you so much for watching this long lecture. Sorry if I rambled, rambled a little bit, but I hope you got a lot out of this lecture and learned a lot from it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next.